Immigration is a big issue. In a recent poll, it topped the list of the most important issues facing Britain. But what evidence do we have about its impact on jobs, on services and on the UK? The first thing we know is that the number of immigrants has been increasing and they are now about 8 million people. Just under half of new immigrants are from the European Union. Most of these come here to work. Most immigrants from outside the European Union come here to study. Some people believe immigrants are taking jobs from British workers. It's true that if an immigrant takes a job, then a British worker can't. At the same time, immigrants create new jobs by setting up their own businesses and by spending the money they earn. Immigrants also enable employers to recruit to less desirable jobs, sometimes allowing British workers to carry out better paid and more desirable tasks. While immigration has reduced pay in some jobs, it has increased it in others. Overall, the result is a larger, more diverse and more productive economy. Almost 2 million more people are in work now compared to 2010. Half are immigrants, half are British. Immigrants are not just workers. Like everyone else, they use services, and this worries some people. They are concerned about the impact on our schools and believe that British children can't get school places. New immigrants are often single and childless. However, if they stay, then it's no surprise that they create their own families here. While some people believe that children who speak another language at home perform badly, research evidence shows that they often do well, and so do other pupils in the same schools. It's also said that immigrants are a drain on our health service. No one knows exactly how much immigrants cost the NHS. What we do know is that recent immigrants are younger than the average UK resident, and it's older people who make the most frequent trips to the doctor. And with 26% of doctors born outside the UK, you are more likely to be treated by an immigrant than meet one in the waiting room. We hear a lot about benefit tourism, yet only 1 in 20 immigrants claim out-of-work benefits, half the rate of British people. Immigrants also help pay for public services, through income tax and other taxes such as VAT. In the long run, much lower immigration would almost certainly mean higher taxes for the rest of us, or worse, public services. Some people believe that immigration only benefits London. Because of its opportunities and long history of immigration, 40% of the UK's immigrants live there. This brings the city both benefits and costs. In the end, London makes a major £34 billion positive net contribution to UK public finances. Everyone benefits from a thriving capital city and strong economy and immigrants help that to happen. The evidence shows that immigration is overall a good thing for the British economy, although there are winners and losers. That is also true of other types of economic and social change, for example globalisation, technological change or equal rights for women. The question is whether government and policy can limit the negative impacts of immigration and spread the benefits. This might take a bit of working out.